Members of the jury, it's that time. These were the words the defendant used to murder Nancy Mason. But it wasn't just those words. Every word that he wrote in the Christmas night email that he sent to Frank Norton had only one meaning, only one interpretation, and only one goal. Kill Nancy Mason. Let's take a look at those words again. Hey, buddy. It's time to do your thing. She is leaving me for some bubba. Remember, I need to know for certain the deed has been done. Give me a hand on this, okay? Try as he may, the defendant cannot run from these words. And today, through the presentation of testimony and evidence, we have showed you how these words got their power. How these words transformed the defendant's plan to murder Nancy Mason into action. You see, you learned today that when the defendant and his girlfriend, Miss Mason, started having problems, the defendant started shopping for a solution. The only solution he saw. He started shopping around for someone to kill Nancy Mason. He started with his friend Chuck Seberg, but when Chuck Seberg turned him down, he moved on to someone who he knew would give him a hand on this. And that someone was Frank Norton. Now you met Frank Norton today, and he told us some things that made us uncomfortable, some things we did not want to hear. And nobody tried to stand up here and tell you that Frank Norton is a nice guy. He's not. But the fact of the matter is, nice guys, those are not the kinds of people that accept $5,000 in exchange for taking a human life. Nice guys are not the kinds of people that the defendant associates with. Members of the jury, make no mistake, Frank Norton is here because the defendant chose him to murder Nancy Mason. The defendant made that choice not the state. And whether we like him or not, we have to look at the fact that Frank Norton's testimony is the only one that matches up with the physical evidence in this case. Because the defendant's story, well, it just didn't make sense. And when I got a chance to cross-examine the defendant today, we got a little bit more information. See, the defendant wants you to believe that he was worried about Nancy. He wanted her to come home. And he knew all along that she had gone to Austin with her new soulmate. But he didn't tell the police that. Not on January 3rd, not on January 4th. Not until March 6th, the day he was arrested for her murder, did this defendant say anything to the police about Miss Mason's trip to Austin with her soulmate. Now does that sound like a man that wants his girlfriend back? Someone who would, would withhold vital information from the police about her whereabouts? Of course not. The defendant also wants you to believe that he knew all along that Nancy Mason was going to break up with her new soulmate and move back in with him. Another thing he neglected to mention to the police until March 6th, the day of his arrest. But remember, we showed you the email that Nancy Mason sent to her friends on Christmas night. An email in which she says she's leaving town with her lover, her BFF, her soulmate. Does that sound like a woman who's planning to break up with this guy and go back to her ex-boyfriend? No. Now, maybe Nancy Mason did change her mind in Austin and decide to go back home to the defendant. Maybe she didn't. The truth is, it really doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because you heard the defendant's words in describing that fight he had with Nancy on Christmas night. She needed time. I did not want to give her that time. Well, we know that, don't we? He didn't give her time. Not a few days, barely a few hours. In the defendant's mind, Nancy Mason was a dead woman walking the minute she stepped out of that restaurant. So he went home and he typed his Christmas night kill order that he sent to Frank Norton. And just a few days later, the defendant got a response to this email from Frank Norton. You saw that today, too. It's done. Proof is in your truck. Time to show me the money. The thing that was done, Nancy Mason had disappeared. Her body had been dumped to the depths of Canyon Lake. The proof, you saw that. Here it is. Nancy Mason's severed hand sitting in the back of the defendant's pickup truck, just like he asked. Finally, the money. Here it is. 
$5,000 from the defendant to Frank Morton. That check was written on January 31st, after Nancy Mason's hand had been placed in the back of his pickup truck, after he sent the email requesting that Nancy Mason be killed. Members of the jury, make no mistake, the defendant paid for what he got, a murder, a missing body, and a hand. Now in just a moment, Judge Rose is gonna instruct you on the law that you must follow in reaching your decision today. And as he'll tell you, the law does not require proof beyond every possible doubt. In life, there are very few times when we know anything beyond every possible doubt. And that's not what the law requires here today. We're required to prove this to you beyond a reasonable doubt. And we've done that. Because members of the jury, there is simply no other explanation for how perfectly this evidence lines up. And that is why in a few moments when you go back to deliberate, I'm asking you to return the only verdict that is supported by the law. The only verdict that is supported by your common sense. A verdict that tells that defendant he got exactly what he paid for. A verdict finding him guilty. Because members of the jury, it's time. 